Hello, Belovers. Today, I'm going to teach you how to heal the ABCs of your life experience. Keep watching. The best way to start at the very beginning, which is always a great place to start. Thanks, Julie Andrews. I like to start with chakras. Let's start with chakra number one. Color red, located at the base of the spine. It is the root chakra. It is also responsible for your stability and the foundation in which you lay your life on. If your chakras were schools, your first chakra would be your elementary school. This is where everything that is rooted in survival, stability, all of that comes in. Now, if your stability is thrown off, you will then go into survival mode. The root chakra also deals with survival. So if you are thrown off of your stability game, you might find yourself in survival mode. Now survival modes typically come along with a blockage and these blockages that we're going to help you unblock are all connected to each other. The reason why all these blockages are so connected to each other is because they're all rooted in a very low vibration. So what you're trying to do here by unraveling your core wounds and your traumas from adolescence or adulthood allows you to elevate your vibration and your energy and allows you to heal. Now what I mean by this is take it back to the first clip that I recorded earlier to do with the essence of who you are from the very beginning of time. Now, any chakra that has to do with survival is also imbalanced by fear. Okay, so if you're having issues with survival, you're being blocked by fear. So what is fear? Fear, obviously false experience appearing real, but fear is also recognized through greed, through want, through desire, because it stems from a lack of having or coming from a place of not having. Essentially, we need to get back onto point with what is it that is taking away from your own stability, causing you to feel like you are living in a survival mode. If you are going through a survival mode right now, what is triggering these kinds of feelings that are causing you to be blocked by fear? Now, when I say you're being blocked by fear, how do you unblock yourself from fear? Thought forms or mindsets based in fear. If a person doesn't do this, this will happen. If then clauses that come into your mind, your cognition, statements that are rooted in fear rather than empowerment. That's when you have to recognize that you are not coming from a place of stability or rootedness, but rather survival and fear. Precisely. Now, once you find yourself identifying these aspects of yourself that are causing this imbalance in your root chakra, that's when you can start doing the work. Now, when I mean by doing the work, it means start identifying those things that you are doing to yourself and rectify them. Which brings us to number two, the second sacral chakra. It is orange and located right below the navel. It stands for creativity and sexual energy. Now, if you're finding yourself unable to express yourself sexually or creatively, you might have a block. Now, this block is definitely rooted in guilt. That's where a lot of sexual dysfunctions come from, inability to express oneself creatively as well. Therefore, identify what aspects of your life from childhood, adolescence, adulthood have caused you to shut yourself off so you can actually function in a more creative and fluid fashion. Again, you are in alignment. And I say fashion because hello, colors are fashionable and your chakras are colorful. So hello. <laughs> Keep in mind that when you are aware of your sacred energy and your sacral energy, you are able to tap into that creative energy. Therefore, your sacral chakra deals with pleasure, creativity, and sexual energy. And we all know that sexual energy, if you don't know this now, now you know that sexual energy is extremely creative, divine energy. Hence, you can create life by being sexual with someone. Therefore, the sexual force that comes behind the sexual energy, if that is blocked or the pleasure is blocked, it's because something has to do with guilt. Therefore, you should never feel guilty about being sexual with your body, being in tune with your divine self. There are actual temples in Europe that were created specifically to become more attuned with one's sexual energy. Therefore, operate from a place of higher acceptance of your sexual self. Number three, the solar plexus chakra. It is yellow in color and it is located right below the chest. It represents willpower and strength. Now, this is where the blockages come in. Shame, abuse of power, manipulation, anything of that sort. If there is any kind of blockage that is affecting you within that frequency, 
identify in? Are you a control freak? Are you super organized, which is not a bad thing, but are you over organized? Are you overcompensating for something that you are not giving yourself? Therefore, you're looking outside of yourself, such as control, identify that. This chakra also deals with personal responsibility and self-esteem. So if you also find yourself in low self-esteem issues, therefore, if you're unable to operate from a place of authenticity because of low self-esteem, there is some root cause blockage having to do with shame. What are you ashamed of? Why are you trying to control and make everything better instead of focusing on making yourself better? Therefore, identify that which is holding you back and move forward. Number four, the heart chakra. It is green in color and it is located at the heart center. This chakra deals with love. If you are dealing with any kind of blockages that have to do with love and you are thus feeling the opposite of love, which is really indifference, the heart chakra governs love, self-love, and it also governs our relationship. Any blockages in the heart chakra are associated with grief. That means that there's an imbalance of self-love, an imbalance of self-reflection within thyself, which then projects onto others. Therefore, you love somebody so much that it hurts your soul, then that becomes attachment. There is no real healing done there if a person continues to look outside of themselves for love and recognition. Again, that love tank must be filled by you first before you expect or ask anybody to replenish it for you. And you should never ask anybody or expect anybody to replenish it for you. You should fill your own love tank. Now you might be asking yourself, well, how do I heal this core wound? How do I heal this blockage in love and all of the others? We're not done yet. So let's get through all of them first and I will tell you how to heal those blockages. But in order to heal these blockages, we have to identify each and every one of them first. Therefore, the heart chakra typically is blocked by that kind of grief, the opposite of real feeling of love because any kind of love that is stemmed from sorrow is not authentic love. Let's move forward to the next one. Number five, the throat chakra. Color blue, located in the center of the neck where the throat is. This chakra governs communication, truth, and authenticity of self when you speak it. Individuals who experience blockages in the fifth chakra may or may not know that they are actually very focused on ego, as blockages that are rooted in that fifth chakra have to do with lies, deceit, and the inability to be effectively authentic with oneself, whether it's how one presents themselves or how one communicates and represents themselves through verbal communication. Furthermore, individuals with these blockages really have to take a look into themselves and hold up the mirror and really identify what they don't want to accept within themselves so they can start accepting themselves and speaking authentically for themselves, to themselves, and by themselves. Individuals with blockages in this chakra may also exhibit signs of shyness, arrogance, mild withdrawn symptoms, and even anxiety. Therefore, do the work so you don't experience this. Let's move forward. Number six, third eye chakra, color purple, located in the forehead in between the eyebrows. This chakra rules intuition and foresight. It is propelled by openness and imagination. Anybody experiencing any blockages in this chakra typically lack direction and lack clarity. To really tune into oneself, one really must meditate and really listen to the inner voice that you have inside and not tune it out. Let's move forward to the last and final beautiful chakra. Number seven. The crown chakra, color indigo, located at the top of the head. This chakra represents cosmic energy, higher consciousness, and sacred energy. The crown chakra is typically where the light enters, such as any kind of information from downloads, meditations. The crown chakra essentially represents the higher states of consciousness, and that is your divine connection to yourself and to the higher states. Anybody that is experiencing blockages in this chakra will exhibit signs of ego attachment, narcissism as well, a disregard for all that is sacred, a dismissal to anything that is spiritual or connected to oneness of all, because essentially we are all one and we are all connected and we are all learning from each other through the collective and through this life experience. Therefore, the crown chakra is where you can start bringing in the wholeness of yourself and start that healing work by bringing in that light energy to you. And this is how we heal all of our wounds with the information that I just gave you. Now, how do we identify our core wounds. Keeping in mind everything we just learned about chakras one through seven, we have to identify what it is that is hurting us. Are you suffering from a breakup? Are you suffering from a job loss? Are you suffering from the loss of a loved one? Are you suffering from a shift of energy? Now you might be asking, how do I heal all of my core wounds with all this information you just provided me about my chakras? This is how. We first identify 
each chakra. Now we identify how we feel and then we do the healing work. So number one, we ask ourselves, are we feeling grounded? Are we feeling stable? How are we feeling? Are we feeling good there? Perfect. Then we move up to the second chakra, the sacral chakra. How are we feeling? Are we feeling creative? Are we feeling sexual? Are we feeling in tune with our divine power? Perfect. Then we move on to the third chakra, so on and so forth. Once you're able to start checking in with yourself and you identify what aspects of your life experience need healing, you are then able to simply identify that which needs to be fixed. How to heal from your core wounds can be kind of a tricky process. And the reason why I say a tricky process is because we all are wired differently and we all have different triggers. Now your triggers might surface from your childhood, from your adolescence, from your adulthood. Now the blockages that you might be experiencing such as inability to love, inability to communicate, inability to have foresight, inability to maintain organization, inability to stay centered within your spirit, you can call it under rug swept. And now you just need to bring it back and relive it because you're not going to find that wholeness and self if you don't do the inner work. There will always be something that bothers you. And if you're one of those people that gets bothered by nonsense, that's typically because you need to do the work and you're not doing it. And there's a blockage that needs to be healed. To heal a broken heart from love, I would suggest you really take a look at yourself and really recognize who you are as a person. Who are you in the realm of love? Do you love yourself enough to know what real love is? Or are you obsessed with love and the idea of love? If you're okay with saying, oh, I love love because I'm such a lover, you must recognize if your tank is full or empty. And if your love tank is not filled with your own self-love, you may be outsourcing your own energy looking for love that can easily be found within you and after you're done outsourcing all that energy and you're still not filled because you haven't received that love that you've been wanting you'll even feel more empty so work on yourself fill that love tank be that love source for yourself don't force your source just be your source. Everything else will come naturally. But how do I get over a broken heart Eric? How do I get over this guy? I loved him so much. I did all this First of all, you have to find that details don't matter. It's what you're feeling. So if you're able to release the feeling after you identify the feeling, move on. Whatever it is from discomfort, from pain to brokenheartedness, identify it, honor it, and then move on. Don't hold on to it for hours. Don't talk about it every single day because then you're creating a negative habit and you're creating more negative energy. You need to move on. Let your life be lighter. Let your life be simple. Identify what needs to be healed in your life. People that have hurt you, have said things to you, have behaved towards you, created some kind of reason for you to be the way that you are. Think of all of these instances and experiences as your lessons, your soul work to do here on this planet so you can move forward and and really be in alignment with your purpose in authenticity, not forced. And you're still asking yourself, but Eric, how do I heal my core wounds? Why am I still feeling this way? You're still not telling me anything. Because you have to, first of all, change your environment, which is why you have to change your environment. Surround yourself with different individuals. Number one, you have to change your environment. Change your surroundings, your milieu, okay? Whatever it is that you're doing in your life that is causing these blockages or these disruptions or these awakenings, you have to recognize them. And if they're not positively influencing your life, you need to change that so you are in an environment that is more supportive and conducive to your growth. I recognize the fact that I have had abandonment issues. I've had um, low self-esteem issues. I've had validation issues, daddy issues. I've, I mean, I have the whole subscription, okay? I don't have issues, okay? I have the whole subscription, okay? But point being is that once I went through each issue and I dealt with that, I was able to end the subscription. I canceled my subscription because I didn't have any more subscriptions. Everything's just a collector's edition of subscription now, what I have. I can look back and say, hey, I really did grow a lot from all of those because it really has to do with you ultimately as a person, not my issues, but your issues have to do with you. What is it that you are obviously either, are you running from something? Are you not facing something directly? What core wound is it that needs to be addressed? Does it have to do with growing up, your parents didn't validate you. They locked you up in the tower and they didn't give you anything other than mashed potatoes and gravy and scones and cream cheese. Do you know what I mean? Like, and maybe you'd be lucky for a cup of tea. Everybody has a different experience that shaped them whether it comes from grief or whether it comes from happiness. Nonetheless, there's still a balance that needs to be maintained. And once you realize that there is an imbalance within you, write down why you're hurting and then identify that. I am hurting because I feel such and such and such and such. And then keep going to the why. And then why? Ask yourself a further why. 
until you can go beyond the why and you can identify exactly why. Because I'm scared or because I don't want to be alone, because I'm not ready. It's okay to tell yourself all of these things if these are the root reasons of why you are blocked by these things, or because I was abused, because I didn't have the power to speak up growing up, or because I was afraid that if whatever it was that is causing you to feel not beautiful and wonderful and amazing and the divine that you are, you need to address these so you can finally let go and rise and start living your best life. Tell yourself every day that you are in alignment with your purpose and you are living your best life. This is Erica Gila teaching you how to heal the ABCs of life experiences. Till next time, keep it real and I'll see you in the next video. Namaste.